Um, but I think what Yitro really contains is the lesson that we want to learn from each other, that no religious tradition or people has a monopoly on truth, and that we do well when we pause and when we listen. And that's precisely what we will be doing tonight. We know there are many things on which we disagree. Our focus tonight isn't even necessarily on the things we agree on. It's on the things that we share as human beings walking through this world, trying to find a way forward together. Our first speaker will be Ihab Lotayev. He's a Canadian engineer, poet, writer, and community activist. He moved to Canada from Egypt in 1989. He's a founding member and longtime participant in Arab Jewish dialogue groups in Montreal. And over the years, he's served on the Egyptian Canadian Coalition for Democracy and the Muslim Council of Montreal. He currently serves on the Board of Governors of McGill University, Montreal City Mission, of which we're pleased to have Anwar as a representative tonight, and Fair Vote Canada. Ihab, please come to the podium. I will also add as he comes up that Ihab Mutayef is one of the organizers of Muslim Awareness Week, which has inspired tonight's event and many others around this city. <coughs>
But this year, or throughout the year, some of us in the Muslim community felt that maybe this is not enough, maybe this is not a solution to the problem. Maybe we can use the attention that society would focus on the Muslim community during the anniversary of January 29th to try to do something different. Instead of waiting for people to come to us, let us try to go out to the people. So we started with this ambitious idea. The idea that we are going to reach out to various community organizations, not, on, not necessarily on religious basis or ethnic basis or any specific base. Organizations and groups and, 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 and collectives in general that we are going to tell them, why don't you participate in Muslim Awareness Week? And what is Muslim Awareness Week? It is just an idea to invite Muslims to your place or to organize an activity that includes any kind of connection with the others. Yes, Muslims are the focus here, but the general idea is know the other. Don't consider the other as a stranger behind the wall, but try to know him or her or them as what they really are. And the response was, to say the least, amazing. And I really have to, again, mention Rabbi Lisa because she was one of the first people when, heard, when she heard about this, she said, we are in. It was one of the first three or four among the hundred plus organizations that we contacted that said, yes, we are in, let's see what we can do. And here we are today breaking bread together, talking to each other, I hope we can talk more, I hope we can know each other more, and there is a hope. That hope might be a far-fetched dream, but there is a hope that as long as it's needed, that Muslim Awareness Week would become something like, like Black History Month, something like the, the Gay Parade, something where people focus on this group of community, although I prefer to call the Muslims communities in plural, not a community. And this is one of the misunderstandings, misconceptions that society holds about Muslims. I hope that this becomes something that happens as long as it's needed, not only in Quebec, but something that would grow beyond Quebec. This year we only try to do it in Quebec because we are just a group of 10 volunteers from the Muslim community who said we're going to try this this year but we're going to try and hope that it will be not owned by any organization or establishment or group. It becomes something that is public, that come the last week of January, every year, we hope to find different organizations, whether they are synagogues, churches, community centers, literary clubs, um, universities, schools, do something in Muslim Awareness Week. We hope that that will be the case. We hope that it will help, even in some small way, make dates like January 29th, like October 27th, become forgotten. Not because we will forget those who have fallen, but because they will be such a distant memory that they will be only remembered as as a, as, a, as a symbol of something bad that was there, that is not there anymore. I have hope in humanity. I do believe that by stepping out of our comfort zone, by trying to feel for the other, even if we have differences with the other, that the world can be a better place. I wanted to talk more about myself to to let you know me as a part of this exercise itself. But I went too much in Muslim Awareness Week because I 
thought it was important to explain where all that came from. But I will end with one thing. I, I, will, I will speak about me a couple of things. That the first time I came into the synagogue, I came with my now wife, Tali, good friend, to meet Rabbi Lerner, to talk to him about us wanting to get married and that neither of us wants to change the religion. And we had a couple of meetings with him and at the end we were comfortable with where we were at and we got married that same year and he blessed that marriage. I came to Canada 30 years ago with two young kids and a wife and life of an immigrant is never easy. But with a, with a belief that this is now my country, this is now where I live. I never try to fake anything. On the other hand, I never looked with a negative, dark outlook on the difficulties that were faced. So I'm not here to talk about difficulties. I'm here to talk, to talk about achievements, and not achievements of me personally, but the achievements of the forgotten vast, vast majority of the Muslim community in Montreal, in Quebec, and in Canada. And it is not because I'm going to mention professors and lawyers and business people that plumbers and cleaners and, and, and uh, housekeepers are not important. There is all of that in the Muslim community. The Muslims are not a stereotype. They are not one community. There are many different communities where we are talking about ethnic backgrounds, about culture, about uh, uh, interpretations of different religious issues. A uh, very, very, very vast community. That is, that is difficult to know even for a Muslim, so let alone the non-Muslims. But it is something to, to keep in mind always. And to keep in mind also that it might be much closer to me culturally that to, to, to sit down and have a fun time and a closed discussion with a non-Muslim Egyptian Copt than it is with a, a Moroccan Muslim or a Pakistani Muslim. So culture and religion also are very important to understand when we're talking about Muslims. Uh, when I meet uh, Jews who got out of Egypt for whatever reason it was, and they and that just happened actually just a month ago in, in a story uh, gathering that uh, that we have in NDG called the Village, and they speak about Egypt. They're speaking about my Egypt that I can't recognize today when I look at what's happening in Egypt and how Egypt is. So, we are creating together a new to know the other. Let us know the other. Thank you very much for having me today.
more adventure and it allowed me to really experience the difference of how people treat you, how they talk to you, how they look at you. And growing up, I didn't really realize it. Uh, my mom just wear the veil. Walking with her in the street, people would look, I would assume it's normal. I didn't realize it, it didn't hit me. Um, when I talk about the fact that I used to wear it, many people ask me uh, two main questions. The first one is, why did you put it on? What made you decide to wear it? The second one is, why did you take it off? Um, so why put it on? Um, growing up, everybody grows up with certain values. I grew up with Islam as being my guidance, my comfort. And a big um, mentality that I grew up with, something that was really ingrained in me, is that the hijab is something that is considered as an extra step towards God. I never saw it as something mandatory, which is why it was never imposed on me. For me, it was something that I saw that I needed to wear before my last day. Um, so when I started to wear it, it was after a, a very intense uh, two months that I lived where it really hit me that you do not know what day is going to be your last. And upon that realization, I told myself that as soon as I come back to, uh, to, Canada, to Canada, to Montreal, I will come out of the house wearing the veil. And that is exactly what I did. <coughs> Although what I didn't know, think about at the time is you have to be close to religion to be able to maintain wearing it. To Because wearing the hijab is not only having something on your head which is a big misconception. You have to act the part. You have to be very peaceful. You have to learn and know how to turn the other cheek. You have to be modest. You have to act in many, in many ways that I did not act before I decided to win. And in some way, I wouldn't say it was a burden. But I, say, I would say that it opened my eyes that I was not ready for that extra step. I was not prepared for it. And I went through many different realizations before I really noticed that it was time for me to take it off. Uh, it was a big battle that I had with myself and that I had to overcome, but it was a decision that was mandatory. Um, when I was wearing it, um, there are many situations that I realized I was in that I would not have been in if I looked like I do now. Um, one of those situations, I'm just going to say a story. Um, we had this activity with a group that I was with where uh, we tried to uh, recreate something that we saw in a video. So you go out with um, a paper clip. You go out on the street and you talk to people. You try to exchange it for something a little bit more valuable, right? And then let's say you get a pencil sharpener, and then you go out to someone else and try to exchange it for something more valuable to see what it is that you can obtain. So while I was going on my search, approaching strangers, trying to explain to them what I was doing, what I was trying to do, I remember this woman that was walking with a little check. And I was walking around, trying to talk to people, and I just remember turning her face towards me. And as soon as she saw me, her mouth opened wide, and she took the child, put the child to her, and speed walked away. That moment is when I realized that there is something wrong with society. That moment happened four, maybe five even years ago now. And it is still imprinted in my head. I can still see the face of that woman pulling her kid away and her reaction. 
reaction to it. I can also see, well actually, I remember a story also that my mother told me about when she was going out on a walk. Right? As I said, she wears a veil. During summertime, it is very hot there, very humid. And she told me how people would, well, a couple would run after her. And they were wearing tank um, tops. <laughs> and they would ask her, are you not hot? Tabasho? And they kept walking after her for about a minute and a half. Just within the communities, within the religion. People will 